final game of the night. Zuma lining up oh! three, and he's gonna melt them all, Maven. Zuma, he needs more help, but they're in a great position to do this, but he does need more help. Zuma, with a third, gets the help from Attach, the dive, Zuma! I'm very pleased to introduce the stallion Call of Duty stud himself. We're not officially blood-related, but I'm happy to call him my Kuji, Tommy Zuma Paparato. How's it going? Hey, what's going on? <laughs> We're pretty much related. Come on. Easy, easy. Yeah. Uh, gotta say congrats on the Anbox signing. So dope that it's an org tied to the New York Mets. Obviously, you know I'm a huge baseball fan. So how were the action seats the other night? Oh, it was amazing. I've never been that close to the field before. So just being that close and, and being so close to the action and talking to some of the players, it was, it was really cool. Uh, yeah, just a little jelly, my friend. Uh, you're playing for New York after so many years on phase. So how has that transition been for you? Um, it was tough at first. Uh, being on phase for four and a half, five years was like, you know, a blessing. They were like a family over there. So when you get so close to people and you've been with them for so long, you get used to it. You get comfortable. So switching was kind of weird. It was just a different feeling. And it was it was weird leaving a lot of friends and people I, you know, I call family. So it's tough to make the switch. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, everybody at New York is amazing and they've treated me amazing. And I can't wait to get the year started. And I'm super excited. Obviously, you know, I want like a little bit of tea. Like I want to kind of peek into your life a little bit. Like how were the conversations having to say goodbye to all of your homies at FaZe? Like you, you've been with them for so long. Um, yeah, honestly, we were kept in the dark a lot about mm -hmm. what FaZe was doing. They wouldn't tell us anything. And I still, to this day, they, they haven't told me what they're doing and what their plans are going into the season. Mm -hmm. And that, that bothered me a little bit just because, you know, I've been on the team for four and a half, five years. I want to know what's going on, you know, as a, as a player, like I, I want to know, but um, you know, I can't wait around for them all the time, and obviously you hear rumors about different stuff that they want to do with the team and mm -hmm. stuff like that, but when I have a great, amazing organization and a great team in my backyard in, in New York City, mm -hmm. close to family and exactly where I want to sign, you know, one of the best cities in the world, so um, it was a no-brainer for me, and I, I did what I had to do, and um, I'm excited I did it. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited too, obviously, and you go to DU, take care of yourself. Um, when you heard the news that Call of Duty was going to be franchised, what was your initial reaction? I said, put me in New York City because that's where I want to be. That's what I said. And I, and, I, and I really like the whole the franchise thing. I just think it's the next level. I think mm -hmm. it's the next step to really blow this thing up. And uh, if it's done the right way, which I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be amazing. And like I said, I'm excited. I'm super excited. Yeah, we're well, talking about doing things the right way. We've got to talk about this New York roster, my friend. we got Tamp, Accuracy, Zero, and of course your boy Attach all on this team. So let's talk about your relationships with these guys. Yeah, um, one of the main reasons I really like this roster is because we are all really good friends with each other. I mean, we respect each other as professionals, and I know that when we're practicing, you know, nobody's going to have an ego and everybody's going to respect each other's opinions. That's one of the main reasons I really love this team. On top of that, um, we're really well balanced throughout the team. We have every role that we need. We have the main AR, the, the flex roles, and the submachine guns. And when you have a, a team that every role is, is solidified, it just makes things a lot easier. So I'm, I'm super excited. I can't wait to play with those guys. Uh, obviously, you know that I lost my mind when I saw that you and Dylan were going to be playing together again. Uh, just because when I first got into Call of Duty, like you were the bros, like you were the dudes that I kind of just found myself always watching and making sure you were doing well. So yeah. talk about that. How long before did you know that Dylan was actually going to be with you again? Yeah, we started talking after champs. So it was, it's, you know, as soon as the last event ended, obviously, you know, we were talking a little bit and we had some plans and stuff like that. So, you know, we were excited. We, we were trying to plan this and get it going. And uh, I'm happy that it all fell through exactly how we wanted it to be. And um, I was with him in the city all, all weekend and we, we were having a great time. So I'm excited, super excited. Are you excited about how the fans have been reacting as well to these announcements? Yeah, the fans are incredible. And even walking down the streets in New York, like people are screaming your name. Like it's like a whole like it's just a weird atmosphere. It's like when when you hear fans of New York City, people like in the city screaming your name, it's like, wow, like we actually have like a fan base here. Like yeah. this is our city that we're going to be representing. And hopefully we can grow that and, you know, get some uh, some pop ups, some meetups and, you know, really blow this thing out of the water. So that's my goal. And, you know, I'm going to work hard. The team's going to work hard and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get it going. Absolutely. Oh my God. No better feeling in the world than feeling like a king in New York. I feel like you can talk to Derek Jeter about that. Um, <laughs> reflecting back though, how do you feel about the last couple of years and your performance in Call of Duty? How do you feel like they've gone for you? 
Um, obviously the last couple of years they've been all right. Um, Black Ops Four was a little rough for me just because the beginning of the year was tough when we, when we didn't qualify for the league. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously it was only like one or one month, two months into the game. So just to have our team just stripped from us a month or two into the game, it kind of sucked. Um, but you know we bounced back quickly. I got I got a good team with some of the Europeans and some of the young guys, and we you know we bounced back and made some runs, especially at Miami. We got top three, which which is cool. And then obviously we we won in World War Two. We won season one, which mm -hmm. was a big win for us. And you go through ups and downs as a competitor, and that's part of the game. So, um, you know, I know what I'm capable of doing. I know I can win. The team knows that they're capable of winning, and we're all very talented and ready to go. So we're excited for this next season. Uh, who are you going to miss the most from your former roster? Um, who am I going to miss the most? That's tough. Put you on a spot. I, I, yeah, it's tough because they all had a little something that I really love. You know, Selian was a young guy. He was quiet, but he was just always frying, and he was such a good kid, such a nice kid. Like, he was just little Selian, you know? Like, we, we loved him. And then Asim was, like, kind of that guy I had a connection with. We were the sub duo. Um, we, we always played off each other in game. And then it was me and Maddie. Me and Maddie, the two, you know, crazy ones, you know? It was always cool. Um, just teaming with Maddie, feeding off his energy, you know. So teaming with Scraps is really cool, and then Trey Zero's with me again. So I can't, I can't pick one of those players. It's just, you know, down the list, I, I have a connection with all of them, so I can never pick. That's fine. I won't make you pick one of your babies. I like how you're kind and you say something nice about all of them. That's why I love you, Tommy. Uh, I want to <laughs> talk about the highlight of your career so far. What would you say that would be? Highlight of my career, I'm gonna say it still is the Gfinity event in AW, just cause I it was the first time I saw my dad in like six years, five years, um, and we were in Europe, so he was able to come down, watch a watch a tournament, watch me compete, and we ended up winning the whole thing. So winning a tournament, and seeing your dad in the stands jumping around with with temper and banks going crazy, it was yeah. like the craziest feeling in the world. So like nothing nothing tops that, nothing. Mm -hmm. Like that was that was it. That was the best one by far for sure. There's just something so special about family getting to see what you do and being to flex in front of them yeah. like that, right? And having a crowd yeah. behind you. Like there's, exactly. especially just being Italian, you always got that Italian guilt around you too. Like make sure that you're doing the right thing in life. That you're going to support your family and be there for them and make them proud. I know your mom's super proud of you too, though. Oh yeah, she's very proud. Um, she always tells me how proud she is. So, mm -hmm. you know, that warms my heart. I love my mom. She's the best. I know. I love your mom too. I'm so happy that I got to meet her at Champs. Um, okay, so what would you like to see in the future in terms of just the league and your own personal growth? Um, for the league, I just want things to be done the right way. Mm -hmm. I, obviously, I want it to be really professional. I, I want teams to take it the right way. You know, we've had uh, struggles with teams, you know, showing up late to practice or, you know, tweeting a bunch of weird stuff. I want everything to be professional. I want it to be treated like a real sport. Yeah. So um, I think I think we do it the right way and, you know, the branding and everything comes out the right way. I think it's going to be super cool. I think yeah. I like, I think it's going to be one of the coolest sports, esports in the, in the game. So I'm, I'm excited. Have you set any own, like your own personal goals that you want to reach? Um, obviously I want to win the league. So like that's that's my number one goal is, you know, grind and win, and win the win the league. So definitely want to win. That's that's the number one goal for sure. And on top of that, I want to you know, I want to build my brand. I want to I want to I want to make videos. I want to mm -hmm. I want to do content. Like I want to I want to start doing more things. Like I want to get out there, get out of my comfort zone a little bit maybe, do some other things. I don't know. Like I I just want to start reaching out, you know. Yeah, I want to because... be the next Doug. For sure. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Oh my god, Doug. Don't don't yeah. be the next Doug because Doug I feel like is a little like too extra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too extra well, Doug, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Doug, Doug is like I can't be on Doug's level of extra. Nobody but, can. Yeah, but I want to be. I, I like. I respect Doug for wanting to do things. You know, wanting to always sure. do different things. So that's something I would want to do. But I don't know about dressing up as a clown on stream. I gotta. I gotta give that to Doug because he's just. He's just on another level. Yeah, but. that's where we're gonna draw the line. Uh, yeah, yeah, but you haven't. You have not posted to your YouTube in a minute. Like obviously, I'm seeing Dylan post some stuff just on the e transition or whatever it is. Why don't you just do some vlog stuff, man? Yeah, I, I should probably start doing some vlogs. Obviously, like um, for me, like during the season and stuff, I'm so focused on other things that my prior my priorities are, you know, sure. watching film and you know playing the game, grinding the game, playing money tens or yeah. playing scrims. Um, I don't really, I don't have time to just go out and vlog every day. Fair enough. So I feel like on the off season, yeah, I could definitely be vlogging more. But I know when the season starts back up, I'm gonna have to cut the channel and, and start working. And I feel bad to people who subscribe expecting videos. I know. And I, I can't bang them out for them. So I, I probably should start making content though, for sure. I, I definitely want to start grinding it a little bit more, for sure. Just give the people what they want. You don't even have to do it. Honestly, you could probably just sit there eating like a prosciutto sand, like j <laughs> just slam a sand, and then like 
that could be content. Just put it out there. Don't, yeah. even, don't even edit it. People just want to see you eat some prosciutto, Tommy. Um, okay, yeah. I want your thoughts quickly here. Um, I guess just the scenes, overall thoughts on Call of Duty going mobile. Obviously, you guys aren't playing that way, but do you feel like maybe this is a great way for fans to get into it? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's just fun to just be able to play Call of Duty wherever you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's on mobile, I haven't even played it yet. I don't know what it's like, but um, I saw it on Twitter and stuff, and I think it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, fair enough. I haven't jumped in just yet either because I'm always concerned about shooters on mobile and if I'll actually enjoy myself. But I just like the idea of bringing in more of a casual audience to maybe jump into COD and then maybe watch you guys on the big stage. Yeah, that'd be super cool. Um, yeah. Tommy... I love you so much. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate your time and wish you all the best with the new season. I love you more. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.